Welcome back. All right, so you watched our first video on how to wing foil. We can go left, we can go right. Now we're gonna learn how to get up on the foil. How about I just let her lead up? Be like, yeah, wing what she said. Part two. <laughs> Welcome back, thank you so much for joining back. Thanks for liking and subscribing. In this video today, you're in luck. We're gonna take you to the next level in your wing foiling, that's the goal. Learn those pumps, how to get rolling. So you've already watched the first video. We're in luck, we have Kelly here. She was in the first video, she's now up and foiling. And we're gonna go over it all to make your life a little bit easier on the hardest part of wing foiling and that's standing up, getting up on the foil and kind of controlling that. So let's get to it. So some really important facts and really important tips that are gonna help you are when you're on the board, the hardest part when you're on the board, you're on the foil and you're holding your wing, what do I do with this board? Because what happens is when you first get started, you always tend, right now, let's just break it down here, the wind is directly at my back, okay? So the wind's blowing directly this, right at the camera, right at you. So. Here's my board, completely 90 degrees to the wind. When I stand up on this board with the wing, and I have my wing here, what happens is with power, everything turns because the wind starts to pull, which means this board turns like this, which also means, which I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about, you start going and you feel like, man, where did all that power go? It's gone, it's, it's, it's gone. And then you roll into the wing. That's because your board turned downwind, the wind's pulling you, there's no power in the wing, and you're going downwind. So a good helpful tip here that for sure helped Kelly, and I'll let her explain her feel of it, is to make sure this board, you push real hard on your back foot here, and you drive this board so that I can turn it sideways to the wind so that I have tension in my wing, and when I have my wing and my arm is straight and I'm heading this way, I can now pull in, push on this, and I can get that movement starting going in that direction. Now, the next step, well, let's, let's hear what Kelly has to say about that, that moment right there I'd when say, you were yeah, learning. That's, that's one of the biggest Did you notice that your board me. was always going downwind? Yeah, so I, I, I get up and I've got a little power and I've got a hold of the wing and right away I just start going downwind. downwind. And, so, and, and you lose all the power. Yeah, and then you can't really do a whole lot. So, so what helped you? So really focusing on putting a lot of my weight on that back heel and looking where I want to go and and kind of trying to turn my hips like this and nice. press into this back heel to get the board turned. The a goal bit is upwind. to take that board like that and keep turning it like this. Yeah. Now, so we now are up on the board. I have the proper angle of the board. Now there's two ways that you need to know about. A lot of you will have your wing and you just pull in on it. And all of a sudden you start hauling and the board may come up and you wipe out. Okay, I can explain this one important fact. If you're just pulling in on that wing and you're already up on foil and you're falling, you're way overpowered. Because, let me break that down. You may not be way overpowered, but you're powered up because most of the time it takes a few pumps to get the board up and going. And once you're up, you have tons of efficiency and lots of power. So if you're pulling in and all of a sudden you're getting up and you're flying, that means you're pretty powered up. So just know that as you move forward in your progress wing foiling. So as long as I keep that board a little more angled into the wind, I get nice and steady and I'm gonna take two or three pumps and it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna grab the wing and I'm gonna go boom, 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 and if that board doesn't want to come up, then, because what happens is when you go like this, your board turns a little bit downwind, you're gonna go boom, 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 you're trying to get up, and then what happens is if I don't have enough power in the wind, my board comes down, right there is when you stop, turn that board back into the wind, wait for tension in the power, wait for tension in the wing, be patient, try it again. If you're doing like three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 26, 37, you're going, I'm telling you, you're gonna go faster downwind than you've ever gone downwind. Hold tight, one, two, three, maybe four. If it's not happening, boom, turn that board back. Get it nice, steady in the wind, try to go up wind. Wait for that tension, wait for you feel a good little puff, and then get on it again. So that's hopefully a helpful tip for you with the pulling in of your arm or the powering of the wing. So. 
Kelly's gonna show us something that's really important here, but I'm gonna go ahead and have Kelly stand on this board. So when we talk about putting that little pressure on your back leg to turn that board into the wind, what, what's a very important tip here that I wanna say is, you wanna turn the board into the wind, but once it's into the wind, your weight can actually go from your back to your front because now the board's already situated into the wind. So that means when I start to pump right now, my weight can be on the front trying to release that back to get that board to unstick. But when you're first getting ready to go, you turn the board with your back leg, you get that leverage, you get the board in the right spot. Then your weight may shift forward onto the front foot because now the board's in the right direction. Now I'm ready to grab that wing and get, get going. And a lot of people will sit on that back foot and now you're just, if that wing comes up, you're literally plowing through the water. So there's no movement forward. So the goal is to have that foil be as efficient as possible. So if I tilt back, that's slowing the foil down. I wanna lift that foil and get it flat so it goes. It want, you wanna be nice and flat. So just because we say we get on that back foot and turn it, doesn't mean that you put all your weight on your back foot. You can get the board situated, weight gets shifted, you start pumping, boom, boom, board starts to turn and you're jamming. So as we're on our tack and you're up on foil, you know, a really important tip is, you know, your first flight, you're trying to learn it. So, you know, touch and goes is not a bad thing, 100%. Take your time, but learn the feel of the wing and the foil. What I mean by that is, you know, if Kelly gets up and she's riding, when that board releases, it wants to go. So that also means that the power in the wing is gonna be generated a lot more. So like Kelly just did, they, you gotta release the power. And, 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 and if you release too much, the board comes down, great. Pump back up, boom, you're back up, release again. Learn this motion so that you can better your first touch and go flights so that you can progress faster by learning this feeling. So don't just lock in and hope for it until you explode because you're not going to learn much. Learn what the wing can do to help you once you get up on foil. Yeah, as well as like that pressure and little tiny hip movements like forward, a little bit back to come up. You're going, you want to come back down, release the pressure, a little bit forward with your hips to get it to come back down, just little. The most important thing is vibes. look, when you got to pump, give it a few pumps. If it doesn't happen, settle the board down, get it back angled in the wind, be patient, wing high, wait for the power, get there, boom, 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 give it a shot. If it doesn't happen, get that board situated again, start again. The best people in the world, you're gonna see them, it's a, it's a bam, bam, bam movement and they're up. And if it doesn't happen, they be patient, they turn, they wait for the puff, they look around. Don't be afraid to do that, be patient, it will come. But if you think you're gonna just pump 100 million times, you may just be going to the Bahamas. So be careful. The next one would be the, the trying to ollie or release of the board. So that would be taking this board and trying to push on this back to release the board up so that the suction of the water releases the board so it foils easier. So that's a little bit trickier, but it's in the same process of when you're pumping. So it's gonna look like this. So I'm on the board, I turn that board into the wind. I'm ready, I'm waiting for that power puff. I feel pretty good, I got some tension. Okay, boom, I start powering. And when I'm powering, my weight goes back and I'm trying to lift this. So I'm trying to lift that nose up, but my weight is center forward. So I'm lifting, but I know the second that wants to come up on foil, I level off because I want that foil to level off and start going. So it's not like I'm just back foot heavy, that foil will go straight up. I'm lifting and trying to center it off, but that'll help unstick the board during these pumps. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, how does that look? That's, just, that's it guys, that's all you gotta do, just like that. Um, I know it seems really weird, but you're trying to unstick the board. And when it unsticks, there's no drag. So remember, your wing, you're gonna be powered. So when you're powered, sheet that back hand out. Let that kind of relax a little bit. Now, let's hear what Kelly had to say about this scenario of unsticking. Did you notice the stick? Did you notice the power when I pulled in and was just going? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the biggest thing too, I think that, that really helped me was when I felt a lot of power yeah. to just take that moment and give a, a couple pumps to try to get up and then really sh work on shifting my weight in my hips more center versus back trying to go upwind 
to so getting you're saying power pumping use this and then a using lot more than just like whoa. You yeah, want to use your yeah, hips. Yeah. Okay. For me, that helped a lot to just center my hips up, and then it kind of levels off, and I'm more controlled did, that did way. you notice it you could kind of release or put a little weight to get that board to come up yeah you, i mean you have and to, that made yeah. a huge difference Absolutely, right yeah. so a lot of people out there struggle with it's very important a lot of people struggle with unsticking the board now if you think about it it's a huge surface area it sticks to the water so we need to unstick it so just because i'm perfectly balanced and i have the wing and i'm ready to go and i have power i may go like that and all that stick will just not let it come up so the only way to let it come up is to Take your hips, shift them back, push down on that back heel and try to unstick that nose so that it can release. Remember, when it comes up, you got to center it off or else it's just going to go wah. So you want to just release it, center it. Now, another really helpful tip that everybody could really use is when I do, I'm on the board, I did my pumps and I'm up and it came up and I'm leveled off, I depower the wing a little bit and I'm foiling. If I'm starting to get super powered up, for sure I can release the wing, but don't be afraid also to take this board and just turn it a little more downwind and that's going to take the tension out of the wind and you're just going to go a little more downwind, you're going to take a little bit of the power away. Know that if I want to kind of get rid of that power, I either have to completely shut off the wing, but it helps people sometimes be able to, sometimes you get going and all of a sudden you just porpoise. That's probably because you edged so hard into the wind it was just too much lift. So don't be afraid to, as you come up and you feel pretty, if you're level, if I go into the wind, it'll usually create more lift in the board. If I go downwind, it'll usually let that nose come down. So just know that the angle of the board can also take your foiling and lift the foil or it can bring it down. Because if I turn into the wind, I now have more lift into the foil versus downwind, I kind of lose the power and the foil comes down. So hopefully that helps you guys understand what this board does. This does a ton with the wings. So angling the board is one of the most important things. I think the next step in the how to foil um, video two here, because if you're going downwind, I don't care how powered you are, you're not going to get up unless if it's like 40 knots. And then I hope that you have a helmet on because you'll need it. But just one huge thing. Let me just chime in. One huge thing for me that you always keep reminding me of is small movements. So I get really excited and I'm powered up and I'm pumping and I get up a little bit and I shift my weight and then I I, I get super excited and I want to like go fast and like put my weight back forward to like even it out but I make way too big of movements and then it it all goes wrong so just the smallest <clears throat> movements is like huge yeah and, and and foiling is about small movements I mean Kelly nailed it it is 100% man these movements like this that's like triple backflips you got to calm it down slow it down it's more of a Zen thing, just calm it down. But <clears throat> Kelly mentioned a really good point before we started this video that I think is very important. And one, we're just gonna show it to you so you can kind of see, but I want Kelly to go ahead and just stand on this so you're facing the camera. <clears throat> so she's here, let's just say she has a wing right here. Something she did that a lot of people do that's a great thing to learn is a lot of people when they start, they're like this, right? This is what happens, this is the position because you're just hanging on. As you get better and you're tacking back and forth, I want you to lift up and lean more against the wing. Yeah, and, and it's gonna give her, you can go ahead and kind of lean back on me. It's gonna give you the ability to have leverage against your board with that wing. Versus if I'm like this, this is a pretty unstable wings hitting, catching. You're unsure what's going on. So as you get better and as you get tacking, into the wind and so, you know back and forth tacking i want you to work on leveraging a little bit more one you can put a little more leverage on the board but that's something that really kind of like hit uh kelly here and and was like a reality check for her. instead of being really out like this she kind of started to leverage back now we've gotten ourselves up on the foil okay i'm up on foil now it's really hard to keep that foil there without dropping down or going up or dropping down it's, that's the tricky part so one let's start with small movements very tiny hip shifts that's it very minimal hip shifts we don't need to make huge drastic movements next one would be the angle of your board if i angle it into the wind or i edge really hard into the wind think about it if i take this board and i turn it <clears throat> against me or that wing against me if i just push on it instantly that's going to come at me and create a lot of lift 
So remember, if I'm up on foil and I instantly turn that board into the wind this way, I'm gonna have a lot of lift because that thing is angling into the wind, it's coming up. If I angle it downwind, I'm gonna lose lift. So know that when I'm up on that foil, my hips can shift to change the angle, but it also, if I steer the board a little down or a little up, changes also that power. And what I mean by power, the lift. So if, if this is my board and I'm riding along and all of a sudden it's coming up on me and I'm edging really hard in the wind, I need to relax, let it kind of go downwind, it'll start to drop and if it drops too much, I need to start turning it into the wind, it'll create a little more lift. Hopefully that kind of helps you when you're up on foil to know that the angle upwind or downwind changes all the foiling but also your hips like kelly said the most important thing is little little movement and and it just takes time guys look we're going to get to video number 497 if we have to to make sure that you're wing foiling so we're on two so we're almost there <laughs> um but <clears throat> i want kelly to chime in Kelly literally knew nothing about wing wind. She never kite surfed. She barely went to the beach. I want to ask her an important question that I think will help all y'all. So when you got up and you're up on foil, did you ever feel like you were a little unsure with how high I am? Am I going down? Am I going up? Is it going to breach? What's going to happen? Absolutely. Okay. So what was your feeling in those moments? Did you feel like I should lean forward? I should lean back? I should let go? I should close my eyes? What, what, what did yeah, you feel? Yeah, all of it. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. She's no help for you guys. Sorry. <laughs> now, what so, would you say was something that helped you? Yeah, it's kind of scary. So when, when I first got up, I was like looking down at the water to yeah. be like, oh, okay, my board's coming up. Yeah. And I was physically looking at the water to see how high the board was off the water. Yeah. And then I would just fall over forward. So would you say lift your eyes up and yeah. look where you're look going? Yeah, look where you want to go and then just feel it come up and and just go with it. Because if you, yeah, because if you are so focused on looking at you're how far right you're, yeah. you're coming up, then your weight's going forward and you're going over the top. Yeah, so a perfect point that she just nailed right there is look, Every, it's just like driving, right? When you first started driving, like you're like right here, you're looking right in front of the car. You're like, ah, I'm in the white line, ah. You know, you're, that's what you do. So it's the same thing. So relax, start looking further and further ahead. You're gonna get used to that levelness of riding a foil. So, you know, don't just focus on right in front of you. Glance up, you can look down, glance up. Kind of start, start looking further ahead. You will start to feel that foil and what it does. And that was a perfect point that Kelly hit is just look, relax, look ahead take some breaths, you're gonna figure it out. And that's, um, that's the exciting part about wing foiling. So we've also seen it, obviously Kelly and myself, we've all done this, but so when I talk about your board and angling it into the wind or downwind, the other negative that can happen is if I angle it too far into the wind, you actually go directly into the wind and then your wing kind of almost hits you. So saying that right now, the wind's at our back 100%, if I take this board and I start pushing real hard on my back foot and I have my wing and I actually kind of get spun backwards and if you ever feel like the wing's hitting you like this and it's kind of like pushing you back and you go over this way, that's because I spun that board too far into the wind. So there is a balance. What I would normally say is feel your wing. Your wing is usually helping you. So when I first start to go, I'm not going to take the wing and just pull in on it. That's what most people do. They, they get on the board, they get up, however they get up. They have the wing here and they get up and they have too much tension right off the bat. That means it turns everything and they're going downwind. Be light, nice and light on that wing. You're just trying to hold it to just hold yourself there. Then I get nice and comfortable. I get my board where I want it and I give it my pumps and I'm up and going. That's kind of the goal. You don't need to go from sitting, oh, I have my wing here and I get up. You don't need to be fully engaged, powered up, because that's just gonna turn you downwind to when I do power, I have no power, because I'm going downwind. Because the board would turn like this, and I would be like, I have too much in, my arms are tight, too much power, and it'll just pull me straight downwind, and now I have no power, because I'm going downwind. You always wanna be on, if I'm going to my left, I wanna be on that right foot, making sure that board is turned into this wind. I want, I want to get that thing like that. That means I have put the most pressure in that wing. Then when I get on it, that board's gonna turn just a little bit downwind. Boom, 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 up and going. So know that if I'm already turned downwind like this, 
and I try to get on it, there's not much there, man. I'm just gonna roll over that wing. There's nothing there. There's just, there's only so much you can get. So I need to get on that back foot, boom. Get that board nice and strong into the wind. Get that pressure in the wing. Let as much wing out as I can on the backhand so that when I'm ready, boom, I got tons of power to get that board to unstick and come up. You know, as we sit here, Kelly and I, we try to explain to you guys, you know, let's be real. This is not easy. You're gonna get it. I promise you put the time in. This is like, you just gotta take some time and know that the learning process is what is gonna make this fun. And it's not an overnight thing. It's not super easy. If people say it is, I would just say, look, you gotta put your time in. You gotta spend the time trying. You gotta go out. You gotta learn and feel it yourself for sure. We'll do everything in our part to give you as much information as possible. But, you know, like Kelly knows, she's been putting the time in on the water and it pays off because time on the water is what's gonna make you good because you just need to get out there, make it happen, and look, you're gonna struggle. I struggled, everybody thinks I picked it up right away. It took me literally four days to stand up on the board. Four days, I'm telling you, four days. You can literally ask anybody. Harry Andrews watched me struggle like no other. I didn't know that a 28 liter board was not really quite <laughs> ideal. Okay, I learned that one. But I'm just saying, look, enjoy the process. It's gonna take some time. We're gonna keep firing off these tips to try to help you. Kelly's doing it, she's loving it. Look, it takes time. You can do this and, I mean, what would you say to that? Yeah, just take the time, put the time in. Put every little step you learn together, stack them on top of each other, start doing one step after and, another and, and keep add watching them up. these videos. Practicing, even like still, like so I'm out and I'm just barely getting up on the foil, but practicing just holding the wing on the beach still yeah. is so helpful for me. Like yeah. every little bit of practice you can get helps. Grab a skateboard, do whatever it takes. Just keep putting the time in. You're, you know, a lot of people, this is, I used to be a ski racer. This is a perfect analogy. Everybody said, you know, you're super good at skiing. I skied every single day, all the time. That's how you get good. If you just ski every one trip a year, you're only gonna be that good of a skier one trip a year. So no. You gotta put the time in. It will come, I promise you, you all can do this. Um, and I, I just believe it. And I won't say it's easy. I would just say put your time in and you can do this. So we hope to see you on the water. Kelly and I are gonna go wing foiling and uh, we sure hope to see you guys out there. We really appreciate you. Please like and subscribe. We're doing this for you. We're gonna have how to number three to 429 or whatever I said, because if that's what it takes to get you going, we're gonna do that. Thank you so much.